I've read the fiery gospel written Burnished rows of steel As you deal with my condemner So with you my grace shall deal Let the hero born of woman Crush the serpent with his heel Since God is marching on All right, welcome to Christian Overcomers and thank you for joining us. We're gonna do a short current events message here today. You know, many people were offended that Donald Trump called for a ban, a temporary ban, on all Muslims entering the United States after the recent terrorist attacks. And, you know, this got so many people upset. How, how could you do that? Uh, uh, that is so, um, you know, unkind. Even many Christians jumped on the bandwagon and tried to distance themselves from that sort of statement. But today we're going to look in the scriptures. We're going to see whether or not it is biblical for a nation's leaders to reject um, immigration from other people of other nations or of other religions, um, particularly during the time of war or when they can be viewed as a threat to the safety of a nation's citizens. So we're going to turn to Ezekiel 34 real quick here, and I'm going to read several verses. It says, And the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say unto them, uh, you, might as well, you could just put America in here, prophesy against the shepherds of America. Now, shepherds are supposed to be, in this, in this context here, they are the political rulers. God says, hey, you, 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 um, you give them this message. He says, woe to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? In other words, aren't you political leaders supposed to take care of the citizens? But you know what? They're always about, uh, you know, themselves and political correctness and popularity and whether or not they're going to get enough votes rather than standing up and protecting the sheep. Um, God says here, hey, um, you, you eat the fat, you clothe with the wool, you kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. The disease have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. You know, just think of uh, all the unjust taxations that our leaders put upon us, Obamacare, and many other such things. He says, and they were scattered because there is no shepherd and they became meat to all the beasts of the field and they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every hill, high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them. None of the leaders cared. Why? Because they cared about themselves themselves. You know, up here it says that uh, the sheep became meat to all the beasts of the field. You know, I feel that uh, can be applied to terrorists today who, who, um, who act like beasts of the field to devour prey. You know, think of it, the people are sheep. And here comes this beast here, this wild animal, like we had here recently, coming in to shoot up all of these, these sheep just sitting around, unable to protect themselves. And the shepherds don't want to do anything about it. Instead, Obama actually starts uh, um, defending Islam and attacking the rights of its citizens to protect themselves from the wolves. By that, I mean he's, he's going after guns, saying that guns are the problem. You know, we have, we have two major problems with mass shootings in America today. That's kids playing demonic video games where they go in and they shoot everybody up. 
and those who hold on to a demonic religious idea, uh, religious teaching that says you should go in and, and kill innocent people, terrorize them. Those, that's what we have a problem with. We don't have a problem with guns. Guns uh, should be in the hands of true shepherds. In fact, if you don't have a concealed carry permit and your state allows it, I recommend that everybody get a concealed carry permit, buy a gun, get trained on it, and defend yourself, your family, uh, your loved ones, and, and your neighbors. Because the wolves are here. And our leaders are letting them in. And there's all but about one man who's not even that much, uh, you know, I don't want to judge him, but he's, he's not really considered to be that much of a godly Christian. Yet he understands and has enough compassion that in order to defend America's citizens, we need to put a, put a stop to the root cause. And that is letting these people into our country while the root cause ultimately is turning back to God. But, but this, he, he at least wants to fight the obvious evil, the obvious danger. And he supports the rights of, uh, of people protecting themselves and, and, and so on. But um, he says... Uh, well, let me continue on. He says, Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Now, when, you know, when um, Donald Trump made that statement, you had... A, a great many Republicans in uh, Congress and the, even the Speaker of the House try to try to say, you know, well, this isn't what the Republican Party is about. This is a little too far. This is extreme. How can it be extreme when someone has the courage to stand up and protect the sheep from the wolves? That that seek upon them like prey. You know, um, in 1924, there was an Immigration Act pact, uh, passed, and you should look it up. Because back then, they actually banned, under that Immigration Act of 1924, all Arabs were banned from coming to America. So it isn't like this is like Donald Trump, some extremist or something like that. Uh, he's looking out for the interests of, of America, the best I think that he knows how. Um, but here's the question. Is this in conflict? S some Christians would say this, might, this, is in, this is in conflict with Jesus' um, commission to his disciples or apostles to go out and make of disciples all nations. But think about that for a minute we got to use a little common sense. This is about protecting the people in our nation against those with an, uh, that have a book that teaches them to kill the infidels and many other such things. You know, I, I often said when I was serving in, the, serving in Iraq, you know, the, the moderate Muslims are really those that don't hold true to their book. It's those that we call extreme, radical extremists that hijack their religion, we say that, those are the ones that actually believe their book. They are the faithful. So, um, anyways, um, is, it in, is banning even a temporary ban, let's just say a temporary ban, is putting a temporary ban on Muslims from entering the United States against Jesus' commission to preach the gospel to all peoples? No. Hey, that still doesn't... We can send missionaries out to other countries. 
It doesn't mean we have to say, hey, come here, and then we'll convert you. In fact, Deuteronomy chapter 7, when God was forming the nation of Israel in the land, he told them to get rid of all the Canaanites, to expel them from the land. And then they were to be a shining city upon a hill to the world from their location. It wasn't, uh, yeah, we'll just bring everybody in to our nation and, and then we're going to convert them. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, you might get a few here and there and, and hey, that's great. But that's, uh, we're supposed to go out and send our missionaries to their countries. We don't have to bring them here. Now, if they're converted to Christianity and um, they're going to be a, we know they're going to be a peaceful citizen or the chances are, yeah, then let them in. Uh, you know, in, uh, in accordance with uh, just immigration laws. Um, Deuteronomy 28 describes um, the loss of national identity, the loss of a nation's culture. Specifically, we're talking about a Christian culture. It describes that as a curse. And yet, we, we look at it today as, a, you know, this, this melting pot as though it's a blessing. That's what we're taught. By liberals in politics and liberals who, who claim to be Christians. You know, New Jerusalem, you know, some would say, well, this, this is just, Pastor Ben is just, he's just totally going contrary to the gospel. Well, have you ever read about New Jerusalem? New Jerusalem's walls are, in, are described in Revelation 21 as being great and high. In fact, they are approximately, if, if, the, if the, um, the conversion is right from cubits to feet, it was 144 cubits, which uh, many scholars say are, are about 216, equal about 216 feet. That's a very tall wall. And, and that's paradise. God describes paradise as having a wall. What is that wall for? Well, let me just turn there for a second. Revelation 21, or 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and that they may enter in through the gates into the city. Through the gates that were in the tall 216-foot wall. And he says, for without, or on the outside of these walls, are dogs, that's homosexuals, sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify uh, unto you of these things in the churches. So paradise is a wall that keeps out, is described as a wall that keeps out those that would do harm to the citizens. So building a wall is not a bad thing. Having borders is not bad. Well, what the New World Order wants to teach you, the New Babylon, is that we shouldn't have any borders. We shouldn't have any cultures. We should all just blend together into one and then be conformed to a new religion, the religion of the Antichrist. But anyways, so what Donald Trump is proposing is not anti-biblical. In fact, he's more biblical than, uh, his stance on this issue is more biblical than many of these pastors in their churches today that are condemning him for this. He wants to protect the sheep. That's why he, that's his purpose. That's uh, his purpose of why he wants to do what he wants to do. Now, again, am, am I saying that uh, Donald Trump is this great godly Christian and that that everybody should vote for him? No, I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying on this issue, he's right. He's right. And, and most of the others are wrong. 
Um, let me turn to one other place real quick here. You know, we're always taught that uh, that Islam is a peaceful religion. Well, you know, in, in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, Jesus told us, he says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. He says, Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Think about that for a minute. Jesus said there are going to be many false prophets that would, that would act like they're really nice. But yet they came to devour. What do you think many of these uh, Muslims are entering into America? Do, do you think many of them are disguised as peaceful Muslims? You bet they are. And we, you know, we have a president today who used to be a Muslim. At least that's what he says. And he, and he expects us to believe that he converted to Christianity when he continually insults Christianity and praises Islam? I mean, think about that. Just years after 9-11 happened, America votes in a, a man who used to be Muslim, and I believe still is, by, his fruit you, by their fruits you shall know them. Well, I see what his fruits are. And it seems, he's, it seems he's always doing that which is harmful to America. And it would be very difficult for me to decide whether or not he's actually on the side of the terrorists or on the side of Americans. Think about that. Has the enemy entered into the very highest offices of our land. All right, let me um, turn to one other place here. In John chapter 10, verse 1, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you that uh, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And he's describing all those people that tried to get to heaven through another door other than him. In other words, any other religion besides, uh, uh, belief, besides um, a belief in Jesus Christ as the way, as the only way, he explains as being thieves and robbers. Not very politically correct, is it? So what does that tell you? All these people from all these other religions that want to come here, eventually they're, the doctrines that they believe in, whether or not the people are like that or not, promote destructive ends to society. Um, verse 7. I'm going to skip to 7 of John chapter 10. Then Jesus said unto, uh, uh, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Now think about that for a minute. Jesus said anybody that tries to go, any, any, basically he says all other religions come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is their fruit. You look at Islam, you look at whatever other religion. That's what it leads to. Atheism, that's a religion. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what we want. We want to bring in all these uh, people who Jesus said are thieves and robbers into the sheep. Bring them in among the sheep. Say, hey, come on in. Oh, we welcome you. We're, we're a welcoming society. I am come that they might have life. 
and they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth the sheep, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. We say, what he's saying there is, I'll, put this, I'll, I'll apply this to our political leaders today. Many of them are hirelings. They don't care about the sheep. They care about power, control, fame, wealth, you name it. Care about uh, being accepted among their peers. But a true shepherd, a true leader, cares for the sheep. And when the wolves attack him, he tries to fend them off. He will stand his ground whether it is popular or not. That's the mark of a true leader, a true Christian, someone who is not a hireling, someone who will stand the gap, whether it's going to cost them uh, uh, fame, fortune, uh, uh, you name it, their reputation. is standing for the truth, no matter what. And you know what? In this, in this sense, Donald Trump is actually acting like a shepherd, acting like a true leader who, who, who wants to protect America. He wants to, he wants to build a wall. Um, to protect our nation from illegal immigration. He wants to restrict immigration from nations that are sending us their terrorists. What could be wrong with that? Again, that's more godly coming from a man that's not that godly. That's more, a more godly action than many of our pastors, ministers, and priests. Anyways, hey, so to answer our question, is it biblical to restrict Muslims from immigrating to America? Well, it's not only biblical, but it's also legal under the Constitution of the United States. Nowhere does our Constitution protect the rights of anybody else from of anybody from any other country it only protects the rights of its citizens and if a, and if a, a president if a president deems that certain peoples are going to be harmful to our country then it is his duty to protect the citizens and it is constitutional in fact, all you got to do is go back to the immigration, go back to the Immigration Act of 1924, and you'll see that it's been done before. Do like what Christ said in Matthew chapter four, when he was tempted of the devil. He said, "Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of God." So see that you take God's word and apply it to real life, so that you can be wise, so that you can be in step with God and so that you can be a Christian overcomer. Christian Overcomers is brought to you by the tithes and offerings of our listeners. If you'd like to support our ministry, please go to ChristianOvercomers.com. God bless you and thank you for your support. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on.